Okay, I'm about ready to go and dismantle this clutch and give it a clean up. And so I'm going to pull off the kickstart. This is another one of those seven millimeter fixings, so it's a eleven millimeter across flats spanner. See if I had the cover off earlier. Now, of course, earlier on, I made a lovely new clutch tool. And let's see what these are like. Now, these normally go down snug. They don't need to be over tightened, but a lot of people do. And they can be really tight to remove. It's a good idea to. Um, you know, put a little bit of penetrating fluid on these several days in advance, you know, keep, keep um, heading them with a little bit of that. Because um, the, 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 the studs are not enormously strongly held in the, um, the clutch centre drum and you don't want to be breaking the, those stud loose because that, that leads to all sorts of hassles. So uh, these got a little dose of, of um, duck oil a while back. And I'm just going to see what they're like. And actually, they're uh, that one turned awful easy. As did that one. It's possible that someone's out a little bit tighter. Yeah, that's broken loose. That one. Okay, no problems with any of these. And we'll just do a proper loosening sequence. So I'm going in diagonals. Yeah, it's awfully nice to actually have a decent tool for doing this. I don't know why I didn't make one earlier. I guess it's because I had had that little bit of a tool and it got the job done. It just didn't do it very nicely. As the get tension gets uh, low, you don't have to worry so much about uh, keeping the sequence even. You know, you just don't want to be backing one of these out all the way straight off. These aren't too badly burred up. I've seen far worse. Yeah, that's, what, that's the stage where I can. Dealing with hand pressure. Oh, there's a couple here that are still. And you should be able to balance the sleeve nuts and everything in their cups and take it off and not drop any of it. Wow! Oh, okay, these are the original factory uh, clutch plates, they're the lightweight alloy ones um, rather than the, the, the Sureflex type which are a, a steel core and, and friction material the, these are um, 
are bonded, if these are, these are um, salvageable, then we'll we'll keep with these. Now, this is the infamous, or at least to some people, conical uh, drive plate. It's not easy to see. It's like a gi giant Belleville washer. And I'm just going to go and get myself a couple of picks to pull the plates out. These are just old screwdrivers that are sometimes got weird little profiles ground on them for looking stuff out. Now, there's a little bit of oil contamination in here, not an excessive amount. Not quite a dry clutch, it's a slightly moist clutch. We'll see what the wear on these is like. I mean, if they're uh, if it is worn too much, I might think about seeing if someone can reline a set for me. And uh, even if they only go on the shelf as a a lightweight set, and I get around to building another track day engine. They're just starting to get hung up on congealed muck in the basket. Starting to get dry back here and even a little rusty. So it would suggest that the oil is perhaps coming around the outside of the, the drum and not from behind the centre hub. Some more gunge getting in the way. Oh, it's a good policy on these clutches to uh, get in here every so often and give them a good clean, just stop the, the material building up. 
you know, they're a pretty easy thing to work on. It doesn't take all that long. You know, it's not, not as if it's a, a wet clutch where you've got to start taking casings apart to do it. Generally, it's thought that these alloy clutches give the, uh, the basket a bit of an easier life, but actually this one's got a fair few burrs in there, which won't be helping me get the plates out. polished areas on here I'm indicating some possible metal to metal oh, and we're back to wet again and okay that's a new one on huh? this is a half and half clutch in the back here is a sure flex plate which is well and truly stuck by the look of things so We won't worry about that one just at the moment. We've got the rest of the stack out. And we'll put that down to that side. This is your lift a mushroom. This one's fine. They sometimes get pretty worn, worn here and they're only available as a second hand part. The end's nice and clean and polished. Seal's not getting a very good grip on it, so I'll probably have a new seal there. The seal is separate from the from the nut and does just just pull out. So let's just get something to knock back the locking tab. I've got a few big old um, cheap screwdrivers that I don't mind hammering on. One thing that cheap screwdrivers are good for <sighs> this has been used a couple of times and someone made a bit of a mess of it the last time they folded it up okay that should do the trick now I mean generally with, with air tools I can get these apart without any special holding tools 
but in fact I have got a clutch hub tool. Uh, again, this was a tool I inherited with the bike. It's just a bunch of used steel drive plates that have been actually is quite cleverly put them together slightly loose so they're easy to align and put a handle on it. Let me just slot that in there. Uh, what are we looking at for a 27? 24, so it's 26 or something. Now it's 25. It's not overly tight, generally speaking. Now, your lock washer's got a little tab that matches up with a, a notch on the centre drum. Our question is now, oh, does that want to pull? The answer to which is sometimes they will just slide off. This one doesn't want to. So I'll show you a little trick for getting that off in a minute. Okay, now I've never found one of these centre drums to be really tight. Um, and it worked. I think I found a really tight one once, but I was not in tr not um, servicing the clutch. I was dismantling the engine, uh, and I dealt with it um, by pulling the side casing off. What I'm going to do is put the cover plate back on. I've gone and found some big washers that are about the right size for the sleeve nuts. I'm just going to put these in there. Finger tight. Now I can put a screwdriver in here and with very little effort that's coming out Go and find a bigger lever. Slid to that point awfully easy, and now I've not got. Okay. There we go. I'm using very little pressure. You know, I'm not at risk of uh, denting the casings up or anything. It's just more leverage than I was able to get. by hand. Okay, and there's a pile of shims, or at least one shim in here. Oh no, there's a couple there. So somebody may have um, actually taken the trouble to, to shim up the end flow on the clutch um, to improve the clutch action. I've never actually found it necessary. I've had clutches with loads of end play that work fine. Uh, in here is your thrust washer. 
Um, and there were about three different styles of these. Uh, I think there was originally a pressed steel one, then there was a bronze one, and then there's this, this nylon one which is white or black, and this one I think was once white, it's now rather brown with age. And now we've got the clearance, I can grab hold of the last plate which was the Sureflex plate that was in there. Now normally there's a certainly on the 350s there's a half plate at the back there because it's fixed in the drum but this is a full width so we'll see how that pans out later and yeah we've got a bit of oil coming in here and looking through the holes in the drum I don't really want to take this out of the here and take it off the primary drive but looking through in the back there it doesn't look as if the oil's been coming from behind the clutch as such so it's not the main seal it's either this seal or it may simply be the uh, the sleeve down the centre here has to be um, sealed onto the shaft with a little hylomar and judging by the way it's moving it may not have been sealed in there 